And joining me live in the studio to take a further discussion on this, I'm being joined by Dr. Flora Unwa Gagbo and also um, Dr. Bolani Uluwa Shola Falaye, the Technical Director of Shop Plus TB program. Thank you, ladies, for joining us on the show this Thank afternoon. You. Thank, Thank you. you. I, I want to start just for the layman out there. Maybe uh, um, you want to define what is TB, what is tuberculosis? How do they identify tuberculosis? Tuberculosis is an infectious disease that is caused by bacteria. It's a chronic disease, meaning that the onset is slow. That's a, sh a long incubation period between exposure and the, and the manifestation of the disease. The signs and symptoms are very similar to COVID virus. Um, there's cough of two weeks or more for TB. So that's one difference. While this cough for t TB is at least like two weeks um, in duration, COVID virus could actually be shorter in terms of the duration of cough. Yes. There's fever of three weeks or more for TB. There's weight loss and nice sweats. So the fact that there is weight loss associated with TB tells you that it's actually a chronic disease that is not um, acute like COVID-19. Um, so um, it actually has similar signs and symptoms and the preventive measures are very similar to um, COVID virus. Uh, Dr. Flora, you want to tell us, are, are there known causes of tuberculosis? What are the known causes of tuberculosis? Well, tuberculosis is caused by a bacteria called Mycobacterium tuberculosis, right? And people tend to acquire this by inhalation of droplets released from someone who coughs, someone who sneezes, someone who's already infected, right? And probably has the disease. And then when the person coughs or sneezes or talks for a long period of time and releases these droplets into the, into the air, then um, another person inhales the droplet and then acquires the disease. If the person has any um, immune compromise, as that is anything that affects the immune system, because normally we are in an, an environment where most of us are exposed to TB in one way or the other because Nigeria is a TB endemic environment, right? So if our immune system is intact, then we are likely to have enough willpower to fight the bacteria, but then if anything compromises the immune system, then we become at risk of developing the disease. Okay, Dr. Bonali, um, do we have statistics of how prevalent TB is mostly here in Nigeria? I know across the world it is. Do we have yeah. statistics of yeah, yeah, the prevalence yeah, yeah, of yeah, TB in Nigeria? We do, actually. So the WHO estimates um, that Nigeria should have about 429,000 TB cases every year. Every year? Every year. That's, that's an alarming statistics. That's the fact. Right. Yeah, but um, unfortunately, we, dis we detect way less than that. Yeah. Okay. Um, every year, we over around 100,000 cases every year. We had a slight increase in detection last year. We recorded about 120,000 TB cases, which we are happy about because the disease exists, whether we like it or not. Um, but when we detect it, we are able to treat those who have it and kill them and prevent transmission to others. Okay. So Nigeria is highly endemic and we have one of the highest burdens in the world and the lowest case detection rates. All right, Dr. Flora, by way of enlightenment, I, I don't know if there are types of TB and which of this type is, maybe variants of TB and which of this variant is prevalent in Nigeria. You want to shed more light on that for us? So we have different types, um, the most common being, so we have um, the TB caused by different organisms, the one caused by Mycobacterium tuberculosis, we have the one caused by Mycobacterium bovis, okay, but the most common is Mycobacterium tuberculosis in Nigeria, and it can affect any part of the body, but the most, most um, prevalent area is the lung. Yeah, but it, it's, it's, it, it can affect any part of the body. It can affect the ovaries, the eye, the breast, you know, any part of the body. However, the one we, we are concerned about is the one that affects the lung because okay. of the risk to the public, right? Con considering that it's spread through droplet infections from coughing and all, we're worried that when someone coughs, then the person is able to infect the rest of the population. Okay. Yes, so that's why we are very concerned about now, it. Now, how efficient has been the elimination of TB in Nigeria? And if it has, uh, are there any limiting factors? If it hasn't, are there any limiting factors to the uh, to total elim elimination of TB? Yeah, our greatest challenge in Nigeria is finding the TB cases. So we find only about a quarter of the okay. TB cases that we have in Nigeria. So our case detection is about 25%. It's one of the lowest in the world. And um, but if we find them, we can treat them. The ones that we do find, our treatment success rate is as high as 87%. So the challenge, the biggest challenge we have in Nigeria in terms of TB elimination is finding 
the cases. Yeah. And let's, let's talk about the role of the private sector in, in helping reducing or elimination of um, tuberculosis in, in Nigeria. What role can they play or what role are they playing currently? Dr. Flora, you want to go at that? Okay, so the private sector is very critical. Now, in Nigeria, um, we have over 60% of the population accessing care in the private sector. You just have about 40% in the public sector. Now, um, prior to now, well, prior to maybe two, three years ago, a lot of TB services were domiciled in the public sector. So when you have just about 40% of people accessing care in the public sector and 60% in the private sector, it means that the 60% are unable to have access to care because in the end they're referred to a public facility. Many of them don't end up there. So we found um, um, Nigeria and then uh, other donor partners found that it is necessary to go to where the people are which is where a lot of them are in the private sector. So now that we have the private sector on board, the private sector has been, since we started working with the private sector, they've been, they've been fantastic in helping to diagnose a whole lot more patients because now the services are available in the private sector. So when people come now, they're able to access um, those services there. And the good thing is beyond just finding people who come in. They also go the extra mile of looking for contacts of these patients, right? So you find that people are able to go even into the communities. And when we talk of the private sector, we're not just talking of the hospitals. Yeah. We're talking of co we're talking of community pharmacists. We're, com we're talking of um, um, laboratories. We're talking of the patent medicine vendor. We're talking of the traditional birth attendant. These are the private sector, not just the hospitals. So you see, if we do not have that holistic approach to m tackling TB, we're never going to make a dent in the OK, problem. today happens to be March 24. And March 24, every year, has been year marked as World Tuberculosis Day. And mm -hmm. I'm just wondering, I know that the line of activities you guys normally will have, mm -hmm. but in, in, in the light of the recent COVID-19, which there's been a whole lot of stay order, um, how do you guys intend to still go about sensitizing the public about what tuberculosis date that is today? So, well, we're here, aren't we? So yes. this is one of the ways by which we intend Besides to... Besides this medium. Oh, you know, yeah. yeah. So we've had, we've had a lot of communication being sent out through various social media um, handles on TB awareness. You have um, a lot of people giving little messages about TB and um, explaining to people how it, how it happens. You have even the providers doing a lot of work, talking to, to, to their patients. And then we have people who are moving into the communities, talking to them in language that they can understand, to be able to get them to understand the mode of transmission, understand the symptoms, and also to quell stigma, which puts people in hiding and causes them and makes them not come out for, for treatment. So there's some work going on. We're hoping we can do a whole lot more. And there's a lot of intervention going on to engage the government and various authorities to see how we can make TB more, um, more, more out there in the face of the people. Because honestly, TB awareness is still very low in Nigeria. Quick check to, to, to um, the layman watching this, this afternoon. What, what are some quick checks one could, could do on themselves to check if possibly one could be, could be um, having tuberculosis, could have tuberculosis? Yeah, thank you. So the basic four cardinal signs of TB are what people should watch out for. So if you have a cough that is lasting two weeks or more, please get it tested. You have to go to a facility to get tested. Two weeks like or more? Two yeah. weeks or more. And it doesn't, whatever kind of cough, dry cough, I mean. Yeah, TB cough is usually productive, means there is a wet cough. Okay. But then you can't rule out that the cough may be dry sometimes, depending on what person has taken in the past. Exactly. Or, you know, other habits and all of that. So we'll say cough of two weeks or more okay. is what we should look out for. And if you have fever, because some people tend to ignore the symptom of cough, and, but if people have fever, they're usually very unwell. So if fever has been on for three weeks or more, please get it tested. Okay. And then if you have weight loss, that is not um, without, any, without any reason, you're not on a diet, you're not trying to lose weight, and you're just finding you're losing weight, please go and get tested in a hospital. All right. Thank you very much for joining us this afternoon, Dr. Flora Unwagabo, the State Coordinator of Shops Plus TB Program, and also Dr. Balani Lushola Falaya, Technical Director of Shops Plus TB Program. Thank you, ladies, for joining us. Thank you.